I'm assuming it's time to get started. There was such a natural low in the room. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. And welcome to the 2013 Parental Involvement Recognition Award Ceremony. A hearty congratulations to each and every one of you. As we were doing designing the program, we realize that there are so many significant accomplishments that each and one of you have made through your involvement and engagement in local schools and community and family organizations. Now, we would like to have Ingrid Kennedy, who's the Assistant Director for Program Development and Equity Partnerships, to come to provide some comments and remarks. Ingrid. Good morning. I would like to start by saying, give yourselves a hand this morning. Give yourselves a hand. This is a fantastic occasion. We are here to celebrate you, to celebrate who you are to celebrate what you do. And it is definitely a pleasure for me to be here this morning to extend a personal congratulation to all of you for your involvement. As my colleague mentioned, my name is Ingrid Kennedy. I am Assistant Director for Program Development with the State Education Resource Center and the Parent, Parent Information Resource Center. It is definitely a pleasure to be here this morning to celebrate what parental involvement is all about. Project Appleseed started this initiative 19 years ago. For 19 years, they have been celebrating parents. And today, across the nation, parents like you are being celebrated for what you do for your children and for your communities. PERC, the Parent Information and Resource Center, began engaged with, the parent, with this project last year. So this is our second year. When we started last year, we, were, we did not know if we were going to do an annual event. Last year, we were in our main offices in Middletown in a classroom. Last year, we celebrated 13 parents. We provided 13 awards. This year, we are recognizing 20 parents. To me, that's growth. This year, we are at the state capitol office. And I feel right now, I don't know if it's because of the building, that we should be signing something into law right now. <laughs> I feel just like it, that we need to say, Parental involvement is a need. Research tell us, tells us that when parents are involved, something just happened to our kids. They just want to do better in school just for some reason. Research says that when parents, schools, and communities come together, something else happens. Kids do even better. But you know what happens? We do not celebrate this enough. So today is your day. And I would like to ask you to please, when you receive your award of recognition, display it, put it somewhere where everybody can see it, so they ask you, what is that? And you say, it is because I am involved and engaged in my school and with my community. I want you to make them jealous. I want you to tell them what it is that you're doing so that they can also do it. 
We know, as we read the nominations, that each one of you brings something very special to your school and your community. And that needs to be made public. Therefore, we are here today to make that public. We at PERC believe in collaboration. Project Apple Seas talks about the different slices of the apple. They say parenting, they talk about decision making, they talk about communication, they talk about collaboration, they talk about those things that make a comprehensive system of support so that our children can succeed. And that is what we are about. Today is about our children, how you have to have you contribute to their success in your schools and your communities. So we want to put the spotlight on you. And we know that some of you do what you do in a quiet manner. You don't like to be recognized. So for some of you today, as the click click and the questions, and they, they talk about you today, because that's what's going to happen. They're going to be talking about you. <laughs> so you have give them something to talk about. <laughs> we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for all of your contributions. Today's date was not just about CERC and PERC. We have partners in our collaboration. The State Education Resource Center and the Commission on Children. Partnership that we have developed in order to recognize what you do for our children. So it is a pleasure to be here today. It is a pleasure to just congratulate every single one of you. I know that your families, your significant others, your friends, those who you invited to this event today are proud of you. We are proud of all of you. We need more parental involvement. There is so much going out there for our children. We need you present. Whatever way we define present, we need you to be part of it. And today we want to thank you because you know, we know you are present. Today we are going to hear about every single one of our awardees today, of your contributions. So the spotlight will be on you. I want to thank you again for doing what you do. At this time, I would like to welcome one of our partners whose love and passion about parental engagement is very visible. Teresa hopkins Statton is the Vice Chairperson of the Connecticut State Board of Education. Then I said we were going to be signing something into law. Mm-hmm. She represents each one of us as a member of the State Board of Education, and she has some words of welcoming as well. So please help me welcome her this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Grice, Ingrid, Cirque, and Perk for again recognizing this annual day of commemoration, honoring exemplary parents and highlighting their outstanding work in our great state. I'm honored to be here and happy National Parents Day. To our parents, grandparents, family members, guardians, caregivers, children and supporters, you know, the proverbial village. Welcome and thank you for being here and all that you do to make contributions to our communities and our schools. To our very special guests, the recipients of the 2013 Parental Involvement Recognition Award, I thank and salute you for taking your rightful place in your child or children's education and being promoters of positive change and action in our communities across this state. Will you all please stand for a heartfelt round of applause. All of our honorees, please stand.
Ingrid, I'm with you. This should be a daily, year-long celebration and partnership because parental involvement does matter and is a critical component to sustain education reform and eliminating the achievement gap in this state. Researchers, educators, policymakers agree that parental engagement is essential to a child's success in school. Yet so many parents don't understand the importance of their engagement or the fact that they have a right to be involved in their child's education. It's a right that is not predicated or determined based on your employment, unemployment, underemployment, or your level of education, or your marital status, your zip code, your address. It's a right that must be exercised positively and passionately on behalf of our most important and precious gifts, your children, our future. I know everyone in this room gets it, especially our honorees. Unfortunately, we have parents who aren't, aren't engaged because they don't feel that they have anything con to contribute. But just look at our honorees and you'll hear more about what they've accomplished. We must all be that village or part of that village and work to change that misconception. Each one of us must reach another parent or family and help them to understand that they are needed in this important work and can make a difference. Two of my favorite vocalists, George Benson and Whitney Houston, sang a song that continues to inspire me and motivate me. Dr. Grice, I won't sing it because, <laughs> because I want to come back next year. The lyrics are, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. You know the song, The Greatest Love. So let us all reach deep within ourselves to find that greatest love within us and then spread it around making our schools and communities in this world a better place, as all of our honorees have done. Again, congratulations, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Teresa, for your kind remarks. Next on our agenda, we will have Stephen Hernandez, Director of Public Policy and Research, from the Commission on Children and the Connecticut General Assembly. Steve. Good morning, everybody. I promise I'm not going to sing either. <laughs> on behalf of the Connecticut Commission on Children, I just wanted to welcome you, thank you, and honor you for everything that you do on behalf of your children. As, as Mr. Gray said, we are a, a commission of the legislature here, so I'm welcoming you to your home. But we're here every day, and we see all of the difficulties and the, the trials that parents are going through throughout the state to do the best that they can for their children. And we all know that being a parent didn't come with an instruction manual, and only, new, only the newest parents have Google to help. But um, you know, I was looking through your matrix of all the things that you do for your kids, and as far as I'm concerned, that's our instruction manual. That's what we should be doing every day as parents for our children. And you are the leaders. You are the most important people in the lives of your, of your children. And you're the most important people, as far as I'm concerned, in this house, in this legislature. Because it is your example that should give us the energy to be as, 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 as much of a champion as you are in the life of your child in government. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for being here. And I'm honored, honored to, to welcome you. Take care. Thank you, Stephen, for your remarks as well. Um, I made an attempt to get around to introduce myself to everyone because I've been doing this email thing, 
VA communication. And I was so glad that I had the pleasure of meeting many of you this morning for, for the first time. My name is David R. Grice from CERC, that person who's been emailing you, keeping you up to date. And I, again, would like to welcome you and thank you for all you do on the behalf of our children. And I noticed many of our recipients today, they also have their parents with them. I met, I can't remember her name, Sandy. She mentioned that she was the greatest supporter of her daughter, although there are other colleagues here, but she's the greatest. <laughs> and I met Comcast this morning. They came on the behalf of their recipient as well through support. And many of you brought your children with you, your husband going into work later today because they wanted to come and witness this occasion. And it's not every day, I think Ingrid and Teresa mentioned, it's not every day that we recognize families and parents for your contributions in our Connecticut schools. But like Teresa, this is something that should be going on every day. And that's a little hint to our administrators who are joining us today. <laughs> Don't forget, tomorrow you're going to do what? Administrators. I know Mary. I met her so I can call her name and I remember it. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to do what tomorrow, Mary? After I chase the children down the hall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this afternoon I'm going to send an email to all my parents. Okay. Thanking them. Okay. Exactly. Thank you, Mary. And others will do the similar thing to continue this excitement that we have today. I too was like Teresa. I was going to sing to you this morning, oh, what a beautiful day. Oh, what a beautiful uh, feeling. I have this wonderful feeling that today is going to be a very good day. At the conclusion of our day today, do not l let this day end, but continue your celebration back at your individual schools as well as home tonight. Husbands who are here, you will be preparing meals tonight and working on homework with children. Okay? Because this is your, your, some of you with your wives, your spouses, this is their day. Now, the moment I'm sure that many of you have been waiting for since November 2nd, I think, when we notified recipients that they will be receiving the award. Like Ingrid mentioned, this year we are very pleased to have 18 recipients. We also have two Mr. and Ms. this year, for the very first time we have a couple who will be receiving awards because of their contribution and involvement in the schools. I think that's very excited. Can we? Um, I would like Ingrid, Teresa, I know you may have to leave, and Stephen to join us as we present our awards. Okay. And please feel to take pictures. Our first recipient, Bruce and Ayana Abenia Benelli, Gunelli, Gizelli. And they will be introduced, introduced by Judith. Good morning. My name is Judith Tucker, and um, I am the PFO president at Platt Technical High School in Milford. And um, I am going to be um, introducing our recipients for the award. And today, uh, Avanya cannot uh, be here, um, but just to let you know a little bit about uh, this family, they are very involved. Actually, um, I'm on the PFO with um, Bruce's mom and dad, and. Um, they have been involved since the 1970s, and so that shows uh, consistency with the family involvement. Their daughter, um, Veronica, she plays softball, soccer, and she's a high honor student, and she's in the National Honor Society. I don't think she would have gotten there without the parent involvement, as they were talking about previous. Um, she's also on the bowling team, and the parents are there all the time volunteering, and in September, they just raised uh, the soccer team just raised $2,000 for the Relay for Life at Jonathan Law High School. And I think that's wonderful. Um, and they're both, ca um, and Veronica's captain of her um, softball team this year. So um, I commend her. 
and I just want to commend them for all the hard work that they do at our high school because without them we would not be what we are today. Thank you very much. If you notice we have the professional photographers. <laughs> we have TJ from my agency and I cannot remember his name but he's from the technical technical high schools. I'm sorry? And we also have a photographer from the Hartford Current. So please feel free to <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but you are welcome to also take your pictures if you want us. Our next recipient, Jeffrey Coppola, being introduced by. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Levinson. I'm the assistant principal of Emmett O'Brien Technical High School in Ansonia, Connecticut. And it's absolutely a thrill for me to be able to introduce you to Jeffrey Coppola. Um, Jeff is seriously, unbelievably dedicated to our school. Uh, he's, he has a son who's a senior in HVAC and plays three sports, plays football, plays baseball, and he, uh, and he plays uh, basketball. And Jeff has, of course, has a full-time job. He works for the city of Ansonia, and at the same time, he is in our building almost every single day. He serves as president of our PFO. He helps us organize car shows, golf tournaments. He speaks at our open houses. Um, he's so involved with the city of uh, Ansonia with their sports programming. Um, and he maintains having a family and being normal and having dinners at the table and being the just a model, model parent. I call him the all, the, you guys heard of that valley a couple years ago, got the all-American valley. Well, he's definitely the all-American dad of the valley. There's no question. So uh, it is an honor as being the assistant principal to introduce you to Jeff, and uh, I hope you have a chance today to meet him. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next recipient, Michelle Degagne, being introduced by the principal. I think it's Mark. Good morning. My name is Mark Foley. I'm the principal at Granby Memorial Middle School. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Michelle Degagne. Despite her humble demeanor, Mrs. Degagne stands out as an amazing example of selfless dedication to the community of Granby. She never seeks the spotlight, but she continually finds ways to contribute to the schools and their students. While she has two children in the Granby Public Schools, she does not limit her support to events involving her own children. The extensive list and range of her volunteer activities clearly reveals a commitment to helping all children and their families. As the new principal of Grand Memorial Middle School, I've only known Mrs. Degagne personally for a few months. Nevertheless, I can honestly say that her reputation preceded her. Countless individuals shared unsolicited glowing comments about her before I even met her. In addition, she was among the first people to welcome me to the school this summer, offering to help in any way that I, could, that I needed it. Michelle has volunteered extensively at several schools in Granby. Among her many contributions are serving as the Parent Advisory Council President for the Middle School, volunteering in the Middle School Sharing to Learn Service Club, organizing a group to landscape a courtyard at the Middle School, looking for ways to coordinate outreach for a family in need, volunteering as a reader in the library at Kearns Primary School, teaching French two days a week at uh, Kelly Lane Intermediate School, serving in the PTO, painting sets for school drama productions, helping coordinate the school's National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence ceremonies, as well as numerous staff and student luncheons and breakfasts, and serving as a room parent for years. 
The impact of Michelle de Gagne's work continues to expand as she finds more and more ways to volunteer her time and energy. She's a remarkably compassionate woman who sets an incredible example for all of us through her personal involvement in the community. It's with great enthusiasm that I introduce M Michelle de Gagne as she embodies the spirit of volunteerism and the power of a single person to create significant change. Our next recipient from the Greater Hartford Academy of, of the Arts, Rita DeGores. I did it. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Jeff Ostroff. I'm the proud principal of the Crack Greater Hartford Academy of the Arts. And because I'm an Arts Academy principal, I think I need to paint a picture with words for you. Um, Rita is one of many parents who work really hard to help their youngsters be successful in school. But imagine this. You're a family from over 60 sending towns from all over, Hart all over Hartford area and Connecticut. There are two programs. There's a full day program and there's a half day program. There are two buildings. There's one at 15 Vernon Street at the Learning Carter, and there's one at the magnificently renovated Colt Gateway building. You know, the one with the Aladdin top. And we ask you to help, as parents, coordinate efforts in our school. So not only do you jump in and get involved with our parents and friends and families, alumni, but you're a half-day parent of a very, very talented young actor, singer, and dancer who was one of the leads in Hairspray last year. And if you didn't see it, you missed something. You'll see him in Into the Woods and probably in Carousel. And he's an honors student. And you volunteer in your home high school in Wethersfield and then put in extra time to come to the Arts Academy and try to herd the cats from all over the state of Connecticut to volunteer, to help out, to work shows, to help in the schools, to do mailings, to do festivals, to do all sorts of things. And that's when you find a remarkable woman like Rita, who's volunteered her time, not only in her home high school, but also volunteered her services at the Greater Hartford Academy of the Arts. So when this came across my desk, in spite of all the wonderful families that I work with, this was a no-brainer. This was a woman who not only took care of her family in her home high school, but also supported her son Michael in the Arts Academy. So I am proud to tell you that Rita has been someone who's kept me in line as well. <laughs> and uh, she's never short. Uh, giving me an honest and open opinion of how we make the Arts Academy a better place. So congratulations, Rita. We really appreciate it. Our next recipient is Marilyn Dunkley from the Madonna School in Middletown. Hello, um, my name is Amy Waterman and I uh, work at the Family Resource Center at McDonough Elementary. Um, but I first got to know Marilyn when I moved into the North End neighborhood of Middletown about seven years ago and I kept hearing her name and I'd never met her and um, I knew she sat on the board of the North End Action Team and Advocacy Group. She was on the, um, the board of the Early Head Start Council and I'd heard how she worked with uh, new moms supporting them with breastfeeding and I was like, who is this Marilyn? and Dunkley. I, I need to meet her. And then I um, got a job as a teacher at McDonough Elementary and um, I saw she was the one in charge of running the summer lunch program single-handedly, by the way, serving 70 to 80 children a day. But it became 
but it became more than just serving kids lunch. Um, families would show up and it became kind of an all-day event where she was here not just nourishing the kids but supporting the families. Um, and then I had the privilege of actually teaching two of her children and so I saw her as a role of a parent and she was the kind of parent that was um, always there but not there too much. Um, asking good questions, really wanting to know how can she help her kids at home with homework or just being there to support me um, and just really being an advocate for her children. Um, and then I moved into my role as the Family Resource Center and I got to work with her even more closely as she came to play groups and brought her children, um, Carlos, to, to play groups and just seeing her interacting and supporting other mothers and just really being the kind of role model that um, we needed and a role model for me as, I'm, Abby, as I became a new mom myself. Um, she completed all of the PEP programs, PLTI, she did raising readers, she, I mean anything that comes her way she takes on. Currently we're working together on the governance committee of elementary school. So really I, I, can't, um, I can't imagine anybody else more deserving of this award and I just want to say congratulations and thank you for um, giving us this platform to, to honor. Our next recipient, Lauren DeLeo from Pratt Technical High School. Hi again. Um, our second recipient, Lauren DeLeo, is my co-president here at Platt Technical High School. Um, she used to be the vice president, but my, when my son graduated last year, I stayed on and I kind of uh, nominated her for this co-presidency because she will be taking over next year my spot. Um, and I wanted to let you know that without Lauren, we could not accomplish all the things that we do at Platt. She is a single mom, and she lives in, in the same community. Um, she, um, anytime I, I need help with anything, fundraising, um, going out and soliciting um, uh, donations from um, uh, vendor, you know, uh, companies are in the area. She is in the car going. Um, she she did a phenomenal job this year at our fall festival car show event, which was amazing. And when we forgot to make our coffee, she went to her second job and she made coffee and and put it in her car, brought it back, set it up. Um, I'm I'm just giving you a a little heads up on some of the things a single mom can do with having two jobs and raising um, a 16-year-old daughter who is a wonderful girl and she's very involved in her school as well. She's in hairdressing. Um, she is on the volleyball team and Lauren is always right there um, at her, her uh, sports events. And like I said, um, she helps me organize the, the teacher appreciation breakfast, the parent breakfast for freshman orientation. Um, she, I just could go on and on and on. She volunteers anytime I need her. She's there at the school because she lives in Milford and I live in Shelton. So again, congratulations to my co-president Lauren. I couldn't have done it without Judy. <laughs> I wanted to say something. Our next recipient is Heather Hemphill from the Plymouth Early Childhood Council. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm Donna Kozier. I'm with the Plymouth Early Childhood Council. And I just wanted to tell you that when the nomination um, form came out, Heather's name was bubbling to the top in Plymouth, but also in Bristol. So she received two nominations. So with me here is Laura Watson. Um, she's an alum of PLTI, and she is the coordinator for the Bristol Early Childhood Alliance. So I'm going to have Donna Osuch, who is, um, covers both of these communities, to, to speak a little bit about Heather. Okay, so I'm like the only non-principal here, right? Um, but but we're, when you hear about um, Heather, you'll understand why. So congratulations to all the other parent winners, and thank you to um, CERC and Connecticut Park and Commission on Children for recognizing these parent leaders and doers. So you all know that parent volunteers contribute to the success of children in so many ways. Um, but here's a neat tidbit I, I learned um, recently. 
Researcher Karen Smith Conway, a professor of economics at the University of New Hampshire, had this to say about the effect parental involvement has on student achievement. Um, parental effort is consistently associated with higher levels of achievement, and the magnitude of that effect of parental effort is substantial. We found that schools would need to increase pure per pupil spending by more than $1,000 in order to achieve the same results that are gained with parental involvement. $1,000 per pupil spending, that's huge. So we're here to recognize the amazing achievements of Heather Hemphill. Heather lives in Plymouth with her husband and her young daughter, Sarah, and has recently begun working in Bristol as the community outreach coordinator. But before she started working with us, this is where all her volunteer efforts took place. Both, both Bristol and Plymouth nominated Heather, and we think that her story will inspire you. So Heather graduated from PLTI, the Parent Leadership Training Institute, in 2012. And some of you probably know what that is, but for those of you who don't know, you have to do a community project. And it's supposed to be connected to your passion. And Heather learned her passion is about young children learning through play. And that sounds kind of typical of a mom, right? But Heather took that passion further than even she expected. She created, she organized a family fun day in Plymouth that was held last year in September of 2012. She wanted to show parents that learning can be fun and she expected a couple hundred people to show up. Well, 1,200 people showed up to this free day and it was had sponsorships. She raised a little bit of money. She was able to raise, um, I think the first year was 17, no, $1,300 to put in a born learning trail in the community in one of their parks. So parents can always go to that park and play with their children. In September 2013, she did this again. In the first year, she did it with a lot of help from the Terryville Library. The second year, she kind of did it by herself with just a little bit of help from others. And 1,700 families showed up. Um, and she raised $1,800 for a, to start a scholarship fund for um, preschool, to subsidize preschool for families who can't afford it. So Heather does care about her own daughter. She is very involved in Sarah's life, but she cares about all children. And she spent countless hours organizing that family fund day. So you know that Heather's going to save Plymouth at least $1,000 a year when her daughter starts school next year. But she's probably saving closer to $17,000 a year with all that family fun day stuff. So congratulations. Our next recipient is Brian Castle from the Beerfield Elementary School in Middletown. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? My name is Jeff Fournier, and I am the principal of Billfield Elementary School in Middletown, Connecticut. And with, my, with me is my colleague, Jill Garrity, one of our outstanding teachers who teaches second grade. And it is my honor this morning to present to you Brian Caskell, who is one of our parents who's being recognized this morning for our Parent Involvement Recognition Award, and his wife, Linda. And we want to, uh, Linda's here also, and we'd like to present Brian to you. Uh, Brian has been, very, been a very active and contributing member of our school community. I met Brian three years ago when he began with his daughter in kindergarten. And immediately, uh, Brian was the first parent I met at the school. He came to sit with me in my office. We had a really nice conversation. And he actually drilled me pretty good, and we got to know each other really well. And right away, I knew from that point forward that Brian was a very dedicated uh, parent, but someone who was going to be a very dedicated member of our school community. And Brian proved to be so. He wanted the best educational experience for his daughter, Emma. However, he made it very clear to me without saying it that he wanted the best educational experience for all of our students at our school. In addition to that, he's been extremely active and supportive at our school in order to support his vision of excellence in our school. For example, he was nominated and has been serving, and he's entering his third year, on our school governance council. And our school governance council is a wonderful advocate, advocacy system for our school, and Brian has been an advocate for our school. For example, 
Immediately after being elected to the council, he was committed to supporting our school, promoting additional resources, and serving as an advocate for our school within the greater Middletown community and to the Board of Education. Brian was instrumental during his first year on the council, advocating for additional staff and certified staff to be hired as interventionists in order to support our students who are in tier two and three who need intervention. To this end, Brian was instrumental in supporting the Governance Council to advocate to the Board of Ed to achieve this goal for our school and for our students, more importantly. During Brian's second term on the Governance Council, he led the way in advocating for additional technology at our school. Along with his colleagues on the Council, Brian surveyed our staff and identified what critical areas teachers were most in need of with respect to technology. And what this resulted in was identifying the priority areas for technology, communicating this to our community at large, and supporting fundraising and contributions from the staff and the Billfield community in Middletown in order to allow 11 Proximas to be purchased for our school. That's a very sizable contribution. And without Brian's efforts, this would not have been realized. However, in addition to being on the Governance Council, Brian's also been actively engaged with our PTA. He is at all the PTA meetings. Through his involvement, Brian has not only supported and been involved in several PTA activities and fundraisers, but he's been very vocal to our Board of Education when three of our teachers were cut last spring due to budgetary reasons. Due to Brian's efforts and advocacy, two of those teachers were reinstated to our school, and we thank you, Brian, for that. That is amazing. And our teachers and community truly support and honor Brian with that. Therefore, it is with my full support and my full respect and my full uh, gratitude that I recommend and I, uh, I, I really present to you this morning Brian as our Parent Involvement Award recipient. Thank you, Brian, for everything. Thank you, Brian. Our next recipient, Don Kriskowski from the Children and Community School of Waterbury. Good morning. It is such an honor to be here this morning to honor a very good friend of mine um, and introduce you to her. Um, she's a very special person at our school and in our community. She's a strong leader. Um, I've had the privilege of knowing her for the last five years. We volunteer together at Children's Community School, which is in Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's a small inner city private school, and it's existed for 44 years because of people like Dawn, who are dedicated and generous. And um, together we've worked at many family, community building events, and I've witnessed her hard work. She's dedicated. She has compassion. She's um, always somebody I go to for advice. She can make sound parenting uh, strong decisions in a minute. Um, and at CCS, our school, we are very, very fortunate to have her. Um, and I also learned that we share her with her job, um, Bank of America. And she has somebody here today with her who also wrote a letter of support. Um, she volunteers at Bank of America around the clock as part of the Bank of America Connecticut Volunteers Network, where she stocks the food pantries for United Way. She coordinates Dress for Success, which is a program for disadvantaged women in Connecticut who are going back to work, um, as well as collecting from many charities. She walks for March of Dimes, um, Stamp Out Hunger. She organizes a clothing drive at our school every year. She supported charities such as Crayons for Cancer, Ronald McDonald House, and she also supports a military support group at her job. So I am so proud and privileged today to be here today and introduce to you Dawn Krakowski. Our next recipient is Karen Parham Lipman from Nutmeg Big Brothers Big Sisters. She's in contacts. 
Thank you, Dr. Grice. Um, I'd like to thank the State Education Resource, first, Brian Kelly, not Meg Big Brothers Big Sisters. And can I sing? <laughs> Do I? No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm. That scared me when I said that. I'd like to thank the State Education Resource Center for inviting us all here today and for sponsoring such an important competition. When I first read about CERC's uh, Parental Involvement Recognition Award and the criteria for winning it, I immediately thought of Karen Perham Lippman and what an ideal candidate she'd be. Not just for the ongoing contribution she makes to the academic and community achievement of her three sons, but also for the ongoing contributions she makes to the academic and community achievement of her little sister in the Nutmeg Big Brothers Big Sisters mentoring program, and also for the ongoing contribution she makes to the academic and community achievements of the additional children she mentors in Beyond School Walls, the site-based mentoring program she oversees at her company. Uh, Karen always accomplishes the amazing things that she does with incredible energy, joy, and an engaging sense of humor. Uh, we're proud to nominate Karen for this award, and uh, I'd like to introduce her now to you. Uh, Karen Perham Lippman, Comcast's Manager of Community Investment. I just wanted to say a couple words. <laughs> um, first, I wanted to thank Cirque so much for this honor. And then I also wanted to thank Big Brothers Big Sisters and Brian Kelly. It's a, a tremendous privilege to work for Comcast. And um, we're actually celebrating our 50th anniversary and I love my company because of our corporate social responsibility. And in my job, which isn't even really like a job, it's a gift, I get to oversee our Big Brothers Big Sisters program. And I get to work with these incredible kids from Lincoln Elementary School. And I have a little, Alyssa, and I've been with her for a year. And she inspires me and makes me really proud to be a big. And then I have these three amazing boys and I'm a single parent, and I am so honored to get up every day and, you know, be inspired and challenged by them. And, you know, it's a gift. And I'm grateful to be of service, and I'm very thankful for this honor. Our next recipient is Heather McGuire from the Rolling Brook School in Avon. Good morning. I am Chrisanne Colgan, principal of Rolling Brook School in Avon. And I am honored to present mm -hmm. Heather McGuire as a nominee for this award. Heather is an extremely active PTO leader. She has extraordinary commitment to our PTO mission, and any of you who are involved with PTO understand the amount of commitment with being the president of the PTO. Heather has served as a president or co-president for four years. So right there, I think you understand that Heather lives in our school. Uh, she also uh, does have a three children and a husband, and she's also there well, as well. But Heather is extraordinary. She seeks out and provides opportunities for all students to grow and develop in ways beyond the school day, be it multi-sports, be it chess club, be it kindergarten enrichment, etc. Right now, she is a driving horse, driving force, well, horse too, I guess. <laughs> She has that gumption, that driving force behind erecting a new playground. A new playground, over $120,000 has been raised under her leadership, and we're planning on breaking ground this spring. 
Heather has an incredible ability to mobilize those around her to work tirelessly, collaboratively on behalf of our children. Her can-do attitude is infectious. Heather, in addition to being our PTO president, is also involved on the Avon Education Foundation as an executive board member. She's been involved as the auction chair for the Connect Children's Medical Center Gala, raising money. So Heather is all about service to our school and to our community. So it's certainly my, my honor to recognize Heather today. Our next honoree is Emily Maxfield from the Special Hearts of Portland. Hello, I'm Linda McDonald and this is Cindy Perry and we both co-nominated Emily Maxfield for this award. It's our honor to be here to celebrate Emily. She's a shining star in our community, a wonderful parent, someone we're very proud to know and to work with. Emily is the mother of two young sons, one of whom was diagnosed with autism at an early age. And in her resolve to locate the most appropriate learning environment for her son, she became a very strong advocate and resource for parents and professionals in our community. She co-founded the Special Hearts of Portland, which is a support group for parents of children with special needs. In addition, this group has expanded to be a resource not only for parents, but for professionals in the community um, in learning how to work best with families with children with special needs. She's volunteered as a special needs advocate when needed in order to assist parents in reviewing their children's IEPs and evaluations has attended PPTs to aid parents in their communication with the school. As a professional, I've always felt comfortable in connecting parents to Emily because she is so sensitive and knowledgeable about what's available for families with children with special needs. She served as a parent member of a work group revising the PPT checklist and toolkit for parents and providers of children with special needs. She's been a guest speaker along with the Connecticut Parent Adv Advocacy Center at UConn addressing the importance of homeschool communication. She is also, uh, has been the co-president of the Moms Club of Portland, which has recently merged with the Middletown Moms Club and has organized a community baby shower, which has uh, raised support and resources for families in need who are expecting babies. Um, she is currently serving on the advisory board of the Nurturing Families Network at Middlesex Hospital. And currently she's volunteering to be a part of the local implementation committee of the statewide Help Me Grow campaign in, the, in Middlesex County to spread the word about early developmental screening and intervention. Emily is a shining star and a gem in our community and we're very honored to know her and to continue to work with her and she continues to just make us proud with her depth and breadth of knowledge and her commitment to our community and our families. Thank you. Next. Recipient is Paula Muzzo from Vinyl Technical High School in Mid Middletown. Is this not here? Okay. Next we have Julian Miller, Milner from Coventry Step Early Childhood Collaborative. Good morning, my name is Katherine Hassler. I am the coordinator of Coventry Steps, our local early childhood collaborative. It's my pleasure to introduce you this morning to Jillian Minor of Coventry. 
Uh, when I first saw this information come across my desk, again, it was the same sort of response. Jillian immediately rose to the top. She's a true parent leader in Coventry. Uh, she currently serves as our chair of steps, um, which involves a lot of committee meetings, a lot of work, uh, a lot of community outreach and advocacy on behalf of young children. She serves as the board president of the local preschool, and she also serves as a volunteer parents' as educator, parents' as teacher's educator, which means that one day a week she gives um, herself and her time to other parents in the community. Jillian truly believes in making Coventry a better place, not only for her own family, two young children, but for all of Coventry families. I'm so proud to know and work with Jillian, and it's, a, it's honor, an honor to be here today with you. Thank you. I notice he's taking more and more shots like we get into four now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're at three. Okay. Um, our next honor honoree, um, Rebecca Perry from the Roland Brook School in Avon. Hello again. I am honored to present to you Rebecca Perry. Rebecca has a deep and personal commitment to celebrating diversity and to fostering family relationships around, all around her. In fact, her family is here today in its entirety to celebrate this honor with her. Last year, we formed a special group, uh, Open Choice Resource Team, to really reach out to our families coming from Harvard and to foster those relationships. Rebecca came to mind immediately. I knew she was the type of person with such passion that was contagious. How could I not invite her to be a part of the committee? And I did. Rebecca has been a true leader on that committee, that team, working with our families from Harford. In Rebecca's mind, all our children are going to be our future. And she reaches out on her own, as well as a member of the team, to forge those relationships with all of our students within Avon and across the, the boundaries into Harford. Rebecca has been a host family to our families from Harford and has seeked out opportunities, tried to pursue grant funding opportunities for special events. Last year, she was a key organizer of a day event at the Connecticut Science Center. It was a warm day in June, so we had the Science Center to ourselves. And Rebecca was very proud. Again, her family joined Rebecca and the rest of us in celebrating diversity on that particular day. In addition, Rebecca is also a very active member of our PTO. She has organized and run our Meet the Candidates Forum, as well as Know Your Town, because her belief is the community must know the schools and the schools know the community in order to be most effective. Rebecca, in addition, is also a volunteer besides our school. She's been a volunteer on the Pine Grove Executive Board, which is a preschool in town. So Rebecca, we're very pleased to honor you today for all of your commitment to diversity. Thank you. Our next recipient is Mr. Ken and Cheryl Pollock. Pollock. They're from Pre Technical High School in Milford. Hi again. Um, I'm very honored to announce our final, third final recipients of the award today, Ken and Cheryl Pollock of Ansonia. Um, they are very involved in this school, and mainly it's with the athletic program. Their daughter, Brooke, is the captain of the softball team. She's on the volleyball team. She's on the basketball team. She's third in her class, high honors, National Honor Society. Without them being in her court, their daughter could not do all these things. And they did request that I 
not draw any attention for being a good parent. I thought that was very honorable for them to even not want anyone to, you know, recognize them for all that they do. Without these, all three families volunteering their time at Plot Technical High School, we could not do half the stuff that we do at that school. And just to, just to make note that the principal could not be here today, I'm very sorry to say, because our school nurse had gotten some bad news that her 16-year-old daughter was just diagnosed with inoperable brain cancer. So I apologize for that. And that's why I'm up here uh, presenting the awards. Um, and I, w I also want to let you know that um, as we speak, um, Platt Technical High School is starting serving uh, the lunches for the homeless shelter today. So when we leave here, we're all going back to, um, to help with that, um, that luncheon. So I just wanted to recognize Ken and Cheryl again for all their hard work at Platt Tech. They just do so much, and I, I couldn't even go on to tell you what all of these families do. Thank you again. Our next recipient is Wendy Robertson from the E.C. Goodwin Technical High School in New Britain. I'm Mary Moran and I'm the principal at E.C. Goodwin Technical High School. And I have a question. Is there anybody here that isn't busy? I mean, if you're not, I have some things that you could work on. <laughs> Let me tell you that Wendy Robertson is busy. She's a mom, she's a spouse, and she works. She works very hard. She has a responsible position and she works very hard. But she has made her children her priority, and that is a priority that she's set and she's been very involved in our school. When I became principal of E.C. Goodwin Technical High School, Wendy had already been involved as the treasurer of our parent faculty organization for several years. Uh, her older son, Malin, was starting his junior year and Matthew, or she calls him Maddie, and he doesn't appreciate it when I call him Maddie, that's something mom gets to do, was starting his freshman year. It's, it's difficult sometimes to organize a parent organization at a high school level. Wendy has been the common thread. Presidents came, presidents went. Other officers came, other officers went. Wendy was steadfast, she was always there. And she handled the money, and that's an important job. Because she handled the money, she was able to provide opportunities for some of our students. Our students all participate in an organization called Skills USA. Skills USA is a trade competition that's sponsored in the state of Connecticut, but it's a national organization. And every year, E.C. Goodwin has students that get to go to the national competition. However, it's very expensive. But with the help of our parent faculty organization and with the help of Wendy Robertson, we were able to provide some financial support for these students so that they could go to the national, the national competition and compete for large sums of money. I appreciate that very much. But more than just participating on our parent faculty organization, if we needed help with anything, if we needed help with Malin or Matt, a phone call is all it took, problem solved. Matthew and Matt were both very, very involved at school. And in the bleachers, every game, there was Wendy. Sometime, and not just cheering for Matt and Malin, but cheering for all the team. She knew everybody's name. Go Andrew, go Damien. She knew them all. After the game, she would tell them what they did right and what they didn't do so well. And I think that on senior night, a couple times she filled in for parents that weren't there to uh, show tribute to the, to the students. If, the, if parent involvement means that we're going to have more productive children, the proof is in the pudding. There are two people here that I know she wishes were here, and that's Malin and Matt. Two things you need to know. One is that until recently I did not know that Wendy is a step parent. I would never have guessed because she loves these two boys fiercely and they love her too. Matthew and Matt can't be here. Matt has just started, this will choke me up a little bit. 
Matthew's just started his military career. He's serving the United States Army, and he has plans to get into West Point. Now, what would make he, him think he could do that? He's a smart boy, but what would make him think he could do this? Well, Mallon, who graduated a couple years ago, enlisted in the Army, and after a year was able to be nominated to go to the Military Academy Prep School, which is on the campus of the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York. He successfully graduated from the prep school and is now standing tall with the cadets. <laughs> we gotta stop this. <laughs> with the cadets at the United States Military Academy. I am pretty sure that this is the only student from E.C. Goodwin to have ever gone to a military academy, and he may be the first student at any technical high school to have gone to a military academy. And I couldn't be prouder of Malin, and I know that Matt is gonna do the same. And if parents being involved creates this type of child, then everybody needs to sign up. And if I haven't told you before, Wendy, thank you. <laughs> now, of course, she's a tough act to follow. <laughs> Let's put it down for a possible speaker next year. Yes. <laughs> and our last recipient, last but not least, is Maureen Susio. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin School in Meriden. And congratulations, that is a tough act to follow. <laughs> I'm David Cardona, I'm from the Meriden Board of Education. Um, I've worked with Maureen on two capacities, uh, at Benjamin Franklin's Elementary School and also on the Board of Directors for the Meriden YMCA. So what I'd like to do is read two letters that were submitted on her behalf because it really encompasses everything that Maureen has done for our community. Maureen is a parent volunteer who has donated countless hours to support Benjamin Franklin School community. With her guidance and direction, a school wellness committee has, was established last year to provide opportunities for students and families to become more aware and involved in wellness activities. Under her leadership, the wellness committee currently consists of parents, teachers, administration, central office staff, and community organization representation. Through this committee, Ms. Suzio, has been able to acquire thousands of dollars in grant money to support the community initiatives established on an annual wellness fair to educate the community and initiated, uh, and initiated several events such as wellness walks, and this one was a neat one, fruit and vegetable fear factor. You have to have been there <laughs> for the school community. In addition to various events, she has also been instrumental in creating additional fitness opportunities for our students during the recess time, we now have various fitness-related stencils and track painted on our blacktop for the students to utilize. Various fitness stations are also being created for the students. In addition to that, to her work with the Wellness Committee, Ms. Susio also is a member of the School Governance Council, and on top of that is also supporting the Parent uh, Teachers Association. With all these roles, Ms. Susio is extremely visible in the school and is a valued and respected member of our school community. It, was, it is with great pleasure, this is from Principal Levendusky, I write this letter to support Ms. Susio for the 2013 Parent Involvement Recognition Award. Now, I'd also like to talk about a little what she does at the YMCA. This is from Executive Director John Levin. Green and her family have been long-standing members of the Wide board of Directors, Membership Committee, and Strong Kids Campaign Fund for four years, and took on the role of Meriden YMCA Board President in 2011. With her usual excitement and amazing energy, some of the major responsibilities as President include board development, fundraising, as the chairperson of our Strong Kids Campaign, and helping guide the Meriden YMCA toward the future 
by assisting in our strategic planning process. Maureen is constantly striving to make differences in the lives of the children and families in Meriden, including our own. Yes, personally, in new programs at the Y, such as a successful program to fight childhood ob obesity, which is transforming the lives of Meriden families, and a smart arts program to help local schools raise needed funds and participate in the Y arts program. Maureen recently formed a wellness group for Beckham Elementary School, which I just talked about. She, she continues to stay connected with the needs of our community by providing finan financial assistance and helping develop programs that address our community. heart, business experience, passion for helping their and family, strategic thinking, organizational skills, and sense of, sense of humor, which she has a tremendous one, make her an extremely valuable leader in the American community. The Meriden Board of Education and the Meriden YMCA really congratulate Maureen on this well-deserved award. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say something very quickly. Um, as all of you know, volunteering is a, an amazing balance between family and community. And I'd like to thank my husband, uh, Jim Suzio. Uh, we have three boys, Will and Jack, who are twin boys that are nine, and Ben, who's eight. So they have all supported me in my efforts, and I'm just so appreciative to be able to help the community and help our families. I'd also like to thank my mother, Janet McCone, for birthing me. <laughs> <laughs> and for all the love and support she's provided me, as well as my sister Colleen, who joined us here today. So thank you and congratulations to all of you. Wow. 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 Um, some of you know me. Some of you, uh, this is the first time that you see me. I'm known to cry cry a lot. And I've been holding every single tear that this little body can produce. Um, because you know sometimes you don't want to get that. She always cries. Ingrid will cry. Yes, I am going to cry. Let me put it out there. Um, there's tears of joy for what just occurred in this building today. The celebration a commitment, the celebration of advocacy, collaboration, the celebration of service. The State Education Resource Center and the Connecticut Parent Information and Resource Center pride itself for being an agency, a center about service. To be a center about service. You heard today the essence of what we do. Every single one of you honorees today is about service. And you like to go quiet doing that service. We are honored to honor you today for what you do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As we come to the conclusion of our event, I would like to actually um, recognize our executive director, Dr. Marianne Kerner. Without her support, Dr. Kerner, without her support and her vision for what CERC and the Connecticut Parent Information Center stands for, our vision of equity, excellence, and education, this event will not have been possible today. So thank you, Marianne, for your commitment to children and families. We would like to encourage, we would like to do a full honoree group picture. Uh, so we're asking all the honorees to gather together so we can have a full uh, group picture. In addition, uh, we will do family pictures, so you can do family and friends picture as well. We want to capture every single 
second instant inch digital something of this moment. Uh, we want to capture it all and also give you the opportunity to network. We still have snacks available. Please feel free. Please get to know each other exchange information. You are all doing fantastic work. Just imagine if you come together and do it as one. Woo! So please continue to network and we have information for you about some future professional development the CERC offers. Uh, just, I, can, I don't want to get off the phone, the, the, phone, the microphone. Um, just thank you so much for everything. It has been an honor and I'm just so happy. I wanted to thank you, our partners, for being here. Teresa, I know you needed to leave early and wow, thank you for staying for the whole event. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Stephen. Thank you so much to the commission. And um, I also want to extend my gratitude to the planning committee of today's event, our conference team. Uh, Lauren, Tyrese, Holly, you have done an amazing job. My colleague Barbara Sloan from Perk, thank you so much. Lynette, TJ, I just want to say thank you today. I just want to say thank you. And I, before I let you go, I wanted to share something personal, if you don't mind. 30 seconds. I just came back from work, uh, to work today. I was in a car accident last week. And you know, I have to tell my doctor, there's no way I'm not going to be at that event tomorrow. And he said, okay, you can go ahead and go and see how you feel. So I can tell him I feel fantastic. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.